Good morning, Vikings. It's hard to believe it's the week before Thanksgiving already. We started our traditional spirit days this week and the much anticipated homecoming skits and competitions are right around the corner. We have a lot to be thankful for this year. If nothing else, we get another long weekend next week. Woohoo! So Naomi, what are you thankful for? My new phone! Cam Howe asked some of you what you're grateful for. Here's what you said. As the Thanksgiving holiday is quickly approaching, I thought it was a good time to ask members of the Trian community, what are you thankful for this year? I am thankful for the support I get from my friends and family and for all the things I have the privilege of doing. I am thankful for the health and happiness of my two children. I have two beautiful kids, they're healthy, and I'm very grateful for that. I'm thankful for a lot of things. I'm thankful for my family, my pets. I'm thankful I both went to Triton, had a great career here, and I now teach at Triton. I am thankful for my friends and family. I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for my best friend. I'm thankful for my day-to-day -day blessings that I take for granted. And I'm thankful for my faith. Um, I'm thankful for Johnny Depp because he's the best actor of all time and no one can beat his amazingness. So as you celebrate Thanksgiving this year, pause for a moment. What are you thankful for? Everyone has their own Thanksgiving Day traditions, but one thing that goes hand in hand with stuffing our faces with turkey and mashed potatoes is football. Lots and lots of football. You may have heard that our own football team won the Division Three North Championship last Friday against Watertown. It was a back and forth battle for most of the game, but ultimately the Vikings came out with the win, their first title in school history. Thanks to your votes, Fox 25 News covered the game that night and brought us these highlights. We're the Watertown Raiders. You're watching Fox 25 High School Game Day. Woo! We are the Vikings and you're watching High School Game Day on Fox 25! Yes, indeedy, and thank you to the Lady Vikings from Triton and the Lady Raiders from Watertown, kicking us off in style here on Facebook Live. Hi, everybody. I'm Butch Stearns, and welcome to my Facebook page. How many of you have all this cool stuff on your Facebook page, huh? Huh? Whatever. A championship decided at Victory Field in Watertown tonight. The Division Three North title. The winner will go on to play Hanover for the Division Three title. Hanover beat Holliston 40-7 to on Friday night. This was a cold and windy night, as Kevin Manowitz predicted, in Watertown. Hats off to all you folks who braved the elements and the cold to watch a great football game. And that includes all of you fans from Watertown, a great, great town, my buddy Peter Santola there, and especially you Triton fans who all drove down to Watertown for the game. And our videographer, got to mention Jeff Robinson and our intern Alyssa Adams, who braved the elements. I would mention producer Andrew Sheehan, who did work hard on this show, but he's warm back in the station here, so we'll save that for later. So let's take you to Watertown for this game, which turns out to be worthy of a championship bet. Watertown in red gets on the board first. It's senior quarterback Deion Smith, number seven, goes up top 19 yards to junior John Cordy. He beats Triton's Dylan Shute, and it's 6 nothing Raiders. Great ball fakes by both teams in this game. Triton quarterback Louis LaRue hands it off and get used to it because Liam Spillane took it breaking tackles. Then LaRue tucks it and keeps it himself and goes 30 yards for the touchdown and Triton goes up 7-6. to six. Watertown's next possession, Triton forces the fumble for number 33, Zach Rimza. Number two, Triton's Tom Lapham recovers it and the Vikings are in business. And LaRue goes back to Spillane. He goes left side into the red zone and out at the eight. He was hard to tackle all night. Two plays later, LaRue, four yards out, keeps it himself. Triton leads 14-6. A Tom Lapham touchdown would put Triton up 21-6. But John Kakachichi's Raiders, is that how I pronounce your name, coach, I think, won't quit. Rims are coming right at you for the nice gain. Then Vaskin, Kabachian in motion. Deion Smith with a nice ball fake, keeps it, and runs it into Viking territory. So Smith tries it again, but watch Spillane, Ryan Farrell, and John Falaska stuff him at the line. But Smith was determined. He's going to keep it again, and this time, nobody's going to stop him. 56 yards to the house. 
Watertown would miss the extra point again, but the Raiders are in business, down by only 9, 21-12. Still in the first half, this was a hard-hitting game. Triton's Christian O'Brien turns the corner, but watch Sorrell Brutus with the brutal hit. Brutus was a little woozy after that one. This might be the play of the game. Liam Spillane takes the screen pass. Look at the tackles that he breaks. You count them. We already did on the 11:30 news. Five or six of them, and he goes 61 yards for the touchdown. 27-12 Vikings at the half. Triton's Brian Hughes with the touchdown catch, and Watertown's down 33-12 when they start the comeback. Same play they started the game with, only longer. Deion Smith to John Cordy, 25 yards, 33-19. Raiders need a turnover coming up. Dave, my friend, and they get a big one. Connor Keneally causes the fumble, and Matthew Muldrew the scoop and score. 26 yards for the touchdown. Raiders only down seven. Time for LaRue to go back to the air. He does to Christian O'Brien, and then he finds Brian Hughes again. 63 yards on his last touchdown. 23 on this one. The Vikings back up by 14. But no quit in Watertown. That combo again. Smith to Cordy, and the Warriors cut it to eight. It's a one-score game. How about another turnover if you're Watertown? Yep, another high snap fumble, and Ben Landry is Johnny on the spot. Watertown has life. So Smith hands off to Rimza. Could he break it? No. Shaq McCarthy says no, sir. Vikings D holds. They turn the ball back over to LaRue, and he goes for the kill. Up top to Dylan. Shoot. Shoot. Gets brought down, but he gets the big game. And then maybe the best ball fake of the night coming up in a game full of them. LaRue keeps it. Jeff Robinson figured it out. 10 yards, Vikings back up 14, 46-32. Deion Smith looking to get Watertown back in it. He goes up top to Cordy again, but Tom Lapham is there for the pick and the seal of the game. 46-32 Triton, a playoff football game worthy of the Division Three North Championship. We've never done this. Triton's never done this. And just all the hard work we put into this, it's, I mean, it's all worth it. We, we do so much of practice and just preparing, and we just deserve it so much. I feel awesome. I love these guys. I'm so confident in our team, and I just, it's a family, so I love it. We've never made it this far, and it just feels great that the season means something. Now there's going to be a banner that says 2016, and we're going to be remembered for this. Hey, we just got to keep working. Coaches got to keep game planning, and I trust my coaches. I trust the line. It's going to be a great year. Great redemption. So proud of these kids. Resilient, as I mentioned earlier. Um, you know, Watertown, credit to them and Coach Kakachi. Uh, they kept coming. They kept coming. Um, they kept making plays, and we kept making plays. It was a great high school football game, a great venue. It was a really nice night, and uh, it's good to get this one. We were physical tonight, I thought, and uh, they made plays. Um, I don't even know who the heck we're playing yet, but uh, we're going to enjoy this one. You play in Hanover, coach, because Hanover won 40-7 to over Holliston. Big win for them. There were plenty of great playoff games on Friday night all around Massachusetts. Hard-pressed to find a better one than this one. Congratulations to Triton, and thank you to all the folks in Watertown who were great hosts tonight. And congratulations to the towns of Watertown and this Triton community around that school. You voted to have us come there, and the game was well worthy of our attention for you. Good luck to both your programs, especially to you, Triton. Moving on next week, and the winner of next week's game between Hanover and Triton will go to the Super Bowl and play at Gillette Stadium. Again, thanks to Jeff Robinson, our videographer, for braving the cold with intern Alyssa Adams, to everybody who was out there, producer Andrew Sheehan, our web guru, Sean O'Donnell, and everybody else who works hard on this for you. We'll see you next time on High School Game Day on Facebook Live. If you've been to any of the games this season, you've heard a familiar voice announcing the plays over the stadium sound system. That voice belongs to our own Mr. Dobson, who's been announcing games for Triton football for years. Kate Strickland and Andrew Goodrich sat down with Mr. Dobson and learned how he got into announcing. I started announcing football games at Triton at least five years ago. I've been told there are some big improvements to the PA system, and I actually heard some music being played there the other day, and it sounds real good. Hands off to Brendan O'Neill, who gets into the end zone for a Triton touchdown.
Again, Triton picking on that left side, going behind the left side of their offensive line. Is it difficult to know players involved in the plays? Yes, at times it's very difficult, especially when there's a whole bunch of people involved in the tackle or before we get the new field, when it would rain and the jerseys would become all muddy, it's hard to tell who is who. <laughs> it is very difficult to pronounce some of the names of players from other teams, but usually I try and ask the coach before the game. Whitman takes the snap, he rolls to the left, pitches it, shovels it to Paquette, who finds some room to run up the sideline. And he's brought down at about the 25 yard line. Did I go to a broadcast school to learn how to announce games? No, I'm a natural. <laughs> of course not. Yes, the school pays me for announcing games. But if you guys want to ask them to give me a raise, I <laughs> No, I don't just announce the football games, I announce hockey games as well. Do I think Triton should offer class in broadcasting? Absolutely, and I think they should let me teach it. It rolled to the right and dumped it to Jed Hutchins, who was standing there all by himself. That was that was real good ball ball skills there by the quarterback. He had us all fooled. I don't really have a favorite broadcast to listen to. I do like Joe Buck and Troy Aikman on Sundays. They interest me a little bit, but other than that, I'll listen to anybody. All right, we're back here at the halftime of the Triton Ipswich game. I'm standing here with. The announcer, Greg Dollis, who you may hear come out over the speakers. Um, so you're expecting the same, some of the same passing. I'm expecting running, so we're going to have to see what happens in the second half. Do I get nervous before games? I used to get nervous before games, but I've been doing it so long, I'm pretty used to it now. But I think Friday night might be a little bit different. So he's second and six. Ball is at about the 11-yard line. Whitman's calling out some signals. Luther doesn't have a lot of guys in the box here. No, and he gives it to Pat. No, Pat Hedy keeps it, and he dumps it off to Jed Hutchins, who's in for a Triton touchdown. We end today's episode with a short film by Hannah Riley. All of us are bombarded with images in the media with messages about what we should look like, what we should wear, and what should be important to us. For many of us, those images are hard to live up to, and when we try, we usually fall short and think there's something wrong with us. Each of us is unique, and this story reminds us to value our differences.
The singer had cut a much fuller figure when she walked the AMA red carpet in a purple chiffon dress just a year ago. Perhaps Christina used her genie in a bottle to create her flawless white top look. You put my grade in wrong on Aspen. You should probably get that fixed. Mom, why can't I be pretty like the other girls in my grade? Hannah, every girl's beautiful. Every girl has insecurities. She's probably at her house right now saying, Why are all the girls in my grade so pretty? Or, why, why can't, can't I just, I just be, be pretty like Hannah? She has her own insecurities too, Han, even though you may not see them. I bet you a thousand times that she's cried to her mom just like you're doing now and said, I, I don't, don't feel, feel pretty, pretty mom. mom. But her mother probably gave her the same answer I'll give you. You're, you're beautiful, beautiful just the way you are. Thanks for sharing your snack time with us today. We hope you enjoyed this episode of VTV. We'll see you again after the holiday. For Naomi, I'm Bria. Happy Thanksgiving, Triton. Bria, be over the top. I got you. Okay. okay. Let's go. Mm. Uh. That's deep. Thanks for sharing your snack time with us today. Uh. <laughs> You're so hot. I know. I'm such a babe. <laughs>